Oh, wait. Hey, Jennifer. Hi. Uh, what do you say to the socialist argument that it works in a small, homogeneous society? Socialism does. Yeah. I say they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Uh, all they communes. Send them to the kibbutz. Yes, I was just going to get to the kibbutz. Exactly. All they communes, whether it's the Paris commune, all the 19th century communes, were homogeneous groups. And it, they started out lovely with love and uh, everybody loved each other. And it was great. And for the first few months, they flourished and they had a great time and they were partying and everything. And within a year, they were stabbing each other in the back and having secret trials and excommunicating people or literally killing people, all kinds of stuff. So these things fall apart. And then the kibbutz, which lasted longer than most and, and was successful for longer than most, also fell apart and could have never been successful economically, if not for subsidies, originally from rich Jews overseas. And then once the state of Israel came about from, from the state itself. But the kibbutz was about as close to a communist environment where everybody believed in it and it was homogeneous they were eastern european they were all um you know they were all committed committed communists and they all came from about the same place they were all jews you have to put works in quotes because it's like oh works in the sense that they didn't starve for a couple of years but like what kind of a life is that to live in that and if you've ever i don't know if ron ever spent time on a kibbutz, but I spent a little time in kibbutz Yagul. And it- Sounds terrible. Hated each other. They hated each other. They would come, we would be outsiders. So we came in and this faction would come to us complaining about that faction. And the next faction would come complaining about the other two factions. Somebody else would come complain. And it constantly, and, and it makes complete sense when you think about it. Everybody gets exactly the same outcome. Exactly the same. Everybody has the same size TV. If anybody has a TV, everybody has to have a TV. Um, nobody spends more time with their kids than anybody else spends time with their kids. Everybody eats the same food in the communal. What's that? No, we're just talking about jo recommending John's book as an yes. example of a business person. Yes. Gentleman said, how, how can I learn about John Allison? Get his book. I'm sorry to interrupt. Absolutely. No. Jonathan's always got his marketing hat on, which is fantastic. Is um, I do have to say on defense of the kibbutz, yeah. it's great for the 70% that don't like to work hard because they have great easy life. And then the other 30% they will do all the work. But it's not great for them either because psychologically they it's resent the fact, Yeah, I know. They resent the fact that they're parasites. And uh, they, so even they're miserable. So it's even the people you think, oh, they get it easy in life. They're miserable because they get it easy in life and they're living off of other people. The amount of unhappiness I saw in kibbutz was astounding. The only people who liked the kibbutz, and I have to say, um, the only people kids. who liked the kibbutz were the kids. Because no adult supervision or very little adult supervision. They got to they gotta really hang out. They got to hang out together. They got to do fun stuff. It, it was, a, you know, and the kids were really having fun, but, uh, you know, and, and a little bit too much fun often. Um, so the first entry for drugs into Israel was through the kibbutz, the, the, the European and the American volunteers who came in the late 60s and in the 70s to work in kibbutzim would bring the drugs and, and the kids started. But it was, um, the kibbutz is a great example and all the communes a great example. It never, ever, ever works. Does it make sense too that the reason they're going at each other and talking about each other is because their focus is not, they're not being egoist. So their focus is not on their own life, but on what everybody else is doing. Absolutely. And, and they, yeah, that's right. They're second handed completely. And, they, and that causes envy and jealousy and guilt. And, you know, they covered each other's wives because, hey, we're sharing. Why, why is, why is the stop there? And, and more fears and more heartbreak and just, just a horrible horrible life um and in recent years there have been some books in israel that have kind of brought a lot of this out because for a long time because israel was so socialist in its founding uh the kibbutz was romanticized it was the ideal it was israeli to the core and that has really changed i'd say in the last uh what 10 20 years really changed plus there are no kibbutzim anymore they've all been privatized 
basically. Well, they are, but are they, they, they don't have the concept of communism anymore. Yeah. Now you get as much as you want and for what you were. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.